I'm going to talk to you about iTunes. Of course, I'm going to talk about something to do with I in front of it. Now, this is iTunes with a difference. It's iTunes U. We use iTunes to get music. We use iTunes U to get things relevant to our education. The U stands for university. Why is St Hilda's on iTunes U when we're not a university? Well, they've just started giving licences to people and we are one of the first K-12 schools in Australia to be able to put our stuff up here. So if you have a look and click through, you'll see I think we've got 23 courses at the minute for St Hilda's. And, um, you know, why are we doing this? Well, Mr Crawley's going to explain exactly why later. I'm only here to talk to you about the really good bits. Does anybody care? Well, about 25,000 people a week and counting care about what we do. This is a graph that I find quite interesting. I love graphs. If you look over on the very far left-hand side, that's Thursday and Friday of the first week back this term. So while junior school and middle senior school are out running around doing the cross countries, we had a small group of staff in the Bev Philbin room and we were doing some professional development with Apple on how to get our site up and running and have a look what happened the very next weekend. You can see the visits that we're generating. Now, my Year 9 class is enrolled in my iTunes U course on Photoshop. They're supposed to be. There's 24 of them, and I'm not too sure if you can see, I have 5,025 students worldwide. So my Year 9s have got 5,001 friends that they never knew existed, but they're lucky, they get the real thing. So who visits us? We've got people from all over the world. The Americans love us, isn't that nice? The Chinese are quite fond of us too. And you're wondering, well, how come only 6% of Australia is coming in? Now, Mr Crawley, who's good at this kind of stuff, he likes per capita figures, you know? How many people per thousand? And if you consider that Australia is 15 times smaller than America, and then you do the maths, Australians actually visit us twice as often as the Americans. So, what kind of device do people use when they come and visit? These 25,000 people a week that are having a look at us, overwhelmingly, they use iPads or iPhones. The great thing about iTunes U is you don't need a big device. You can look at it on your iPhone. It's interesting, isn't it, that iTunes for Windows is 6% of the world that visit us comes through iTunes for Windows, but only 3 and a bit percent come via a Mac. Now, it appears to me that almost everybody that owns a Mac must also have an iPod or a phone or a pad, and that's what they use. So, how popular are we? Really popular. Numero uno. Last Tuesday, Miss Jacker was the single most popular course in the world. With her... <laughs> had to be maths, didn't it? Numeracy, NAPLAN Year 7 and 9. Now, there's over 350,000 items of work and courses on iTunes U. And out of all of that, Miss Jacker was the most popular. I wasn't remotely disappointed that the maths beat Photoshop. And then I had a look, and we weren't just popular worldwide. When you crunch down into individual courses, at that one moment in time, we were number one in maths, number two in maths, Ms Hammond put up a really nice course about how to use the graphics calculator. You should have a look at it because she went to a lot of trouble. She had a manicure and everything and she's got math spelled on her fingernails. It looks really nice. A little school, little struggling school called Harvard came in third and we came in fourth. So we missed out on getting gold, silver and bronze by that much. But I, I don't mind Harvard. They, they try hard. They deserve to come third. We've got comments. People actually saying that they love maths. I can't understand this. Number two, I love this. This helped me so much. Where is these lessons coming from? <laughs> now, I'm going to go out on a limb and tip that's a boy that wrote that. He's sitting there with his magic iPad. Oh, more NAPLAN. Wonderful. But then here's another boy, I'm sure. I found this course really helpful for my napalm practice. Now, the younger girls, if you don't know what napalm is, ask your parents. But you certainly don't want to practice with it, I'll tell you that. 
But we're not just popular in maths. The number one and number five courses worldwide, I love saying this, worldwide were from St Hilda's. We were number two in engineering. Now, engineering is a big one because if you look at the top course, it's called Coding for an iPhone and an iPad, and it's by Stanford University, very famous university on the west coast of the United States. And at this TED conference two years ago, two young students that graduated from the very first Stanford iPhone um, course that was written wrote the iPhone app for St Hilda's. And you might remember some of you that were here last time seeing Kayvon talk about that. That's a really famous course. Now, Mr Ward's course came second to that, and Stanford came third as well. But here's the best part. Obviously, all the people in Stanford are having a look at this table, and they're saying, who the hell is this place called St Hilda's? And they've opened up Mr Ward's course, and they said it was great. Five-star rating from Stanford University. So that made Mr Ward feel pretty good. And it made me feel pretty bad because nobody's given me five stars yet for my Photoshop. Even though I've got 5,000 friends. Now, it's not just me that's doing this. I'm helping the staff prepare for things. But Miss Damon and Miss O'Neill have been writing courses in English and history. And they're going to talk to you a little bit about what they do now. All right, girls, so, and ladies and gentlemen that are here, as those of you who are from St Hilda's know, I am very passionate about English, but what you may not also be aware of is that I'm incredibly passionate about a smaller course called English Communication. And what I've been doing this year is running English Communication offline, but online. The reason we've done this is because we were finding it so difficult to be able to cater to the girls who were wanting to do English Communication and so by taking it out of the normal timetable, it's given more flexibility to the girls who are actually needing to do this course or wanting to do this course. What iTunes U has allowed me to do is to be able to cater for those girls and as you can see, we've got two courses up there already. So our first term unit, Sugar versus Spice, and the unit the girls are doing this term, Who Am I? What's also great about it is that other people can share in the passion that I have for English communication. What I'm hoping is that by putting it up on iTunes U, that other people from other schools are going to be able to take the work that we've been doing here at St Hilda's and adapting it for themselves. And so being able to put my name up there, put my details up there for people to contact me if they want to and talk about the experiences that we're having, hopefully we can reach other people as well. The great thing about the course is that it allows the girls who are doing it here, but also whoever else is going to be involved, to see where we're headed with each of these programs. The lessons go up, the resources go up, and essentially it's being able to deliver that curriculum in a way that we didn't have the ability to do before. The thing I really like about it is that it allows me to adapt the teaching style that I've already got, to put the resources out there, and the thing that I really have taken from it and I hope you can take from this as well is part of it is really about taking risks. This is a very different way of teaching. It's a different style to be able to present your information to students. So risk taking, number one. But the other thing, if you can see the little ticks in the boxes, it's one of the ways that iTunes U lets students manage their own coursework. Part of this is really about trust as well for me in terms of what we're doing as a school. I'm trusting the girls in my classes to go in and do the work. I'm not standing there behind them in the classroom. It's really about giving them their own freedom, their own responsibility for their learning, which I think is a really important thing. Okay, and I will now pass over to Miss O'Neill who can tell you how she's using it in a different context. Okay, so thank you to Mr. Powell and Ms. Um, Damon for introducing um, iTunes U. Um, today I want to highlight how I think iTunes U can save you time and I'm talking to the beanbag gallery. Um, you guys are telling us all the time that you have no time, that you're so stressed and that we have made extreme demands on your life. And so I think that iTunes U is a tool that perhaps can help navigate you through your difficulties of year 12. But let's not face, let's not leave out the 10s and the 11s because of course you think your lives are very difficult too. <laughs> um, 
At this point, I want to send a shout out to my classes, my senior ancient history classes and my year 10 classes, because I sort of um, experimented on you a little bit and opened the world of iTunes U to you and realised that you really didn't know that it was there. And when you did realise that it was there, you actually did think it was as cool as I thought. Um, about 12 months ago, I discovered the world of iTunes U and I got really excited because this was the closest I was ever going to come to being able to listen to some of the world's leading professors in courses that I really would love to study in places that I'll never get to study in because of distance, money, time, etc. I downloaded many lectures, as you can see. Some of them are actually mine, but the Oxford one's not. Um, and I started listening to lectures on the way to and from school every day. And I was amazed at how much I learned and how much I enjoyed actually listening to these professors whose work I was reading and whose books are in our library and whom I was encouraging you to go and read for your assignments. So it dawned on me that if I could use iTunes U to expand my own knowledge without having to find the dedicated time to sit down and read... Um, then so could you. So I've long listened to sad stories from my seniors about how much time they don't have, how demanding I am. I don't have time to read this. Is this really important? Is it on the test? Do we need to know that? All that kind of stuff. Um, as a history student, but really as any student, so even those who don't study history in this room, it is really critically important that you expand your own knowledge in the subjects that you are studying and let's face it, in the wider world around you. You need to know stuffs. So, <laughs> all students, whether you go to this school or not, you are marked on knowledge. If you have a look at your little assessment criteria sheet, somewhere on there it will say ability to expound knowledge in an appropriate manner, etc., etc. So, where does all this knowledge come from? Yes, of course, it comes from your classroom experiences with your awesome, dedicated teachers. But, um, as the student, surely at some point the onus is on you to expand your knowledge whenever you can. You are the learner and it shouldn't stop just because the bell has gone and the class is over. More learning, I hear the beanbag gallery say. Who has time for that? I have a maths assignment, hospo prac, English oral. I have to work, practice for my P's, update my Facebook status, upload my Instagram, reply to text messages, tweet my bestie and have a life. I don't have time to learn more stuffs. You do. iTunes U. iTunes U is as flexible as your iTunes music and your iTunes vamp diaries and your iTunes whatever else you are downloading. It is as flexible as your Facebook account and it is mobile as your Twitter? Tweet? Twitter? Okay. So... All of this stuff that Mr. Powell and Ms. Damon has introduced to you is free. You can access the world's greatest scholars, delivering lectures on a huge range of subjects, and they're just waiting there for you to download. To help my senior classes, because they need it, I compiled relevant material for each of the courses um, so that they simply need to listen or sometimes watch an awesome video from a lecture or even sometimes to play a game. So, you can see here that I simply instruct them to listen to a lecture or watch a video lecture, play games, whatever, whatever. Listen to this. And the ticks don't mean that they've done it. The ticks mean that I've actually done it. So, there's a whole range of um, posts that encourage them to explore what's already out in the world of iTunes U, delivered by the very people whose material they have read for their assignment. I have at least one student driver in my ancient history class. This is a true story, you ask her. Instead of listening to music on her way home in the car now, she listens to lectures linked to the work that we do in class. And that has got to be an easy way to get some ancient homework in without having to pick up a pen or sit in your room. And let's face it, it's so much better for the drivers next to you who don't have to listen to your doof doof music when you pull up to the lights. 
I have some year 10 students in my class who will now listen to lectures of Holocaust. Didn't you year 10 class? Um, they did it while they were sitting in a comfy um, couch, lying on their beds, going to the gym, going for a walk. Sure, it's not the most motivating music. It's not the latest episode of some TV show that you watch. But in the space of one hour, these girls have either relaxed or done a gym workout and actually engaged their brains as well. So tick history homework, tick workout. Not to mention the added points you'll score at home. When your parents ask if you are downloading more doof doof music from iTunes again and your response can be honest and heartfelt. Yes, Mum, I am on iTunes again, but I'm downloading this awesome classics and ancient history course from Cambridge University by Dr Mary Beard. Would you like to sit and listen to the lecture with me? Hmm. <laughs> My message to you is this, seniors and others in the audience. We know that time is of the essence now. That's a fact of life that is never going to change no matter how far you go in life. We know there are many demands on your time, but how can you make the technology that is available to you to change your lifestyle? How can you the t use the technology to change the way you are? Many of you walk around with your earphones connected to your iPod or your iPad or your iPhone. I see you all the time at school. The leap from listening to music in an effort to fill your void moments to listening to a lecture to expand your mind surely is not that great a leap to take. iTunes U is about so much more than music and movies. Find the iTunes U tab on iTunes homepage. It's the one right at the end that you've always wondered what it was but too scared to click on it. Once you have found a course or found some way to listen to the latest information on your favourite um, subject, it may just save you time, your sanity, my sanity, your parents' sanity. So get downloading now, people, and stop complaining that you have no time. Thank you. Thank you.